Lawmakers get back to work, winter weather is on the move, and SpaceX launches into orbit. This is OU Nightly. Good evening and welcome to OU Nightly. I'm Storm Jones. And I'm Lauren Limbo. We begin with breaking news. A sexual assault right here on campus. OU police say it happened at Couch Center. Two university employees report another employee touched them inappropriately. Detectives say the incidents happened at separate times. While they were taking the first report, the second victim came forward reporting the sexual misconduct misconduct incident happened on January 28th. Oh, you please say there is not a threat to anyone on campus at this time and university officials confirm the accused employee has been placed on leave while officers investigate. And another big story we're watching is the threat for winter weather. Jenna Warner joins us now. Jenna, how close will that wintry mix get to Norman tonight? Sorry, sorry for that. And we apologize. We'll get back to that weather in just a bit. But now lawmakers go back to work after Governor Mary Fallon issues her state of the state address and executive budget. It closely follows the step up Oklahoma plan. The plan includes new taxes. OU Knightley's Car Carson Williams was at the Capitol today and has more on the efforts to solve the budget crisis. But our goal this session should be to fix the chronic budget crisis address the important policy goals that are in front of our state. Mary Fallon's final year in office is not ending the way that she hoped it would when she became governor. It is my honor to present the second regular session of the 56th legislature, my state of the state address, and the final one of my administration. <laughs> now seven years of tax cuts has left the state in a nearly $300 million budget hole for this year and a $700 million budget hole for next year. This is a defining moment for our state. We have two clear choices. We can continue down the road with a path of sliding backwards, or we can choose a second path, which is to say, enough is enough. We can do better. We deserve better. Our children deserve better, too. A $1.50 tax increase on cigarettes will raise north of $230 million. Gas and diesel could see a $0.06 cent per gallon increase to raise nearly $130 million. The state's oil and wind energy tax could increase, raising nearly a combined $157 million. Weldon Watson is a top Republican leader in the House of Representatives dominated by Republicans. There are things that legislators are concerned about, very concerned about. I think the biggest concern, and this oftentimes becomes the battle, is if we're going to raise additional revenue, let's also have some reform. The problem Oklahoma faces is critical, and state lawmakers say unlike past legislative sessions where they couldn't agree on how to raise money, this time they're going to do it quickly. Carson Williams, OU Nightly. And now we'll get to Jenna with a check on that winter weather. Jenna? That's right, guys. So there's a band of rain trying to form here in Norman. It's right over here. But in order for that to form, we'll need our relative humidity to rise. So we're at 60% relative humidity right now, Norman. That's really the moisture in the air. Ardmore down here who's seeing precipitation is at 88 just for a check for you guys to see. Coming up in weather, we will hit your evening commute. Do we have a warm-up coming up soon? And weekend rain chances. Back to you guys with this. All right, thanks, Jenna. And encouraged by Governor Mary Fallon's call for new and creative solutions to fix the state's budget crisis, Representative Mickey Dollins introduced House Bill 2913. The bill would create a partnership between farmers and universities in the study uh, to, to study the economic and environmental impacts of growing hemp industrially in Oklahoma. Representative Dolan says the biggest hurdle for the bill would be educating the public about the difference between hemp and marijuana. Uh, what this is for are textiles, it's for uh, biodegradable plastics, new fuel resources, and obviously, as you know, the CBD oil, which has become pretty popular in Oklahoma on Monday. Tense moments in Taiwan early this morning. Nicole Nielsen joins us now in the News Center with the latest on that. Nicole. 
A 6.4 magnitude earthquake struck near the coast of Taiwan just past midnight local time on Tuesday. The earthquake is responsible for the caving in of Marshall Hotel, killing two employees and injuring over 200 others. The 5.1 aftershock hit shortly after the quake. This incident is one of many strong quakes Taiwan has seen in the past few days. All flights have been canceled to the area and relief measures are underway. President Trump plans for another government shutdown if Democrats can't get on board with his proposed changes to U.S. immigration law. During a White House roundtable conversation on the MS-13 gang, Trump voiced his opinions on immigration issues and the possibility of another shutdown arising. If we don't change the legislation, if we don't get rid of these loopholes where killers are allowed to come into our country and continue to kill, gang members, and we're just talking about MS-13, there are many gang members that we don't even mention. If we don't change it, let's have a shutdown. We'll do a shutdown, and it's worth it for our country. I'd love to see a shutdown if we don't get this stuff taken care of. President Trump's proposal includes steep cuts in legal immigration and extending border security in exchange for protecting dreamers nationwide. And SpaceX was successful in its launch of the named Falcon Heavy rocket this afternoon. At liftoff, the Heavy became the most powerful rocket in use today. The rocket took off at Kennedy Space Center, the same launch pad used by NASA nearly 50 years ago, to send its men to the moon. Two of the three boosters were able to successfully return to Cape Canaveral, while there has been no word on the center booster reaching its ocean platform 300 miles offshore. And Lauren, the price of this launch is only nine, $90 million, which is actually a lot lower than a normal launch would cost. Thank you, Nicole. Nothing to do on a chilly evening this tonight. Grab a coffee with a cop. The Norman Police Department will host coffee with a cop this evening at Apple Tree Chocolate beginning at 545. All community members are invited to attend and discuss local issues with local police officers in a neutral space. Norman PD will continue the event once a month at different times in efforts to reach all interested Norman residents. And still to come on OU Nightly, a roller coaster ride at the gas pump. Find out what to expect the next time you fill up. Plus more on a proposed entertainment district in North Norman. We'll have the story right after this. Well, those final numbers for today from Wall Street look a bit better than yesterday, but we've still been on a roller coaster this week. Colin Kennedy is keeping an eye on that in today's Money Matters. Colin. Thanks, guys. The stock market is all over the place, but the stocks are steadily surging this afternoon, just one day after one of the steepest drops on Wall Street in recent years. The Dow Jones Industrial Average temporarily jumped up 510 points, and some more recent numbers show the jump currently at 345 points, or 1.4%. The S&P 500's index climbs 25 points, or 1%, while the Nasdaq Composite rose 91 points, or 1.3%. We'll continue to monitor these changes and keep you updated. And stocks may be dropping, but Amazon's market value is on the rise. With the company's value now over $685 billion, Amazon has reached a higher value than Microsoft for the first time ever. Now Amazon only trails Apple and Google owner Alphabet in the highest market value standings. These three giants now race to become the first company ever to be valued at $1 trillion. And you may need to take a loan out after filling the tank up because increasing gas prices put the E in D-E-B-T. Think about that joke while I break this down for you. With the recently, um, national gas price averages have reached a increase for the sixth consecutive week putting the average at $2.61. Oklahomans have seen one of the highest rises in state price averages, with drivers paying 17 cents more per gallon than they were just one month ago, guys. That wow. hurts me. Even though Oklahoma is currently still in the top 10 as far as most affordable gas prices, I just got a new truck, so gas is going to hurt me either way. So yeah. more more price, still hurting my wallet. You need a moped. Yeah, Exactly. I guess so. My car is a tank, so it, it just eats the gas up like crazy. With weather like today, you might not want the moped. <laughs> Thanks, Colin. Probably not. And plans for a new entertainment district in the north of Norman have been discussed for about a year now. And today, local business owners and city officials had the opportunity to hear all about it from the OU Foundation, their vision from the organization's president and CEO. We want people to live in University North Park. We want them to work in University North Park. 
and obviously we, we want them to continue to shop and, and play and go to restaurants and so forth. This afternoon over a pizza lunch downtown, Norman hosted a public forum for local leaders and officials with questions about how the development will affect the city. Topics discussed included the uh, revenue expected to be generated from the city and for the city that is and the cost of building and maintaining the sports anchored district. In terms of uses for the development, um, we expect between the parking structure and the uh, arena itself uh, about $160 million. And according to the University North Park website, the plan will include dedicated bike lanes and enhancements to I-35 to make the area more accessible. The district will also include 10 acres of new parks and open space, as well as housing and space for 4,000 new residents. Two Tulsa Postal Service workers accused of stealing marijuana from packages at a mail sorting facility have pleaded guilty. The Tulsa World Report's 47-year-old Laura May Campbell pleaded guilty to conspiracy under a plea bargain after co-worker Derek Miller admitted to stealing drugs from packages since 2015. Authorities obtained more than 60 pounds of marijuana from Miller's home and more than 10 pounds of marijuana from Campbell's residence in September. Still ahead on OU Nightly, Bud Light keeps good on a Super Bowl promise, plus Jenna is standing by with the weather. That's right, guys. So what exactly is it doing outside right now? I'll have all that and more coming up next. Welcome back to OU Nightly, guys. So this is a live look at downtown Norman right now. It's a bit hazy, but no freezing rain has fallen just yet. So currently it's 28 degrees, cloudy, and we do have those winds coming from the northeast, 9 miles per hour. So we are going to take a look at the Tulsa cam right now. It is completely iced over, over as they have seen some freezing rain fall already. We have reports of a bunch of wrecks up there. So if you're driving in the Tulsa area, definitely be cautious of road conditions. So our forecast for this rain event coming in, it, we should get grazed just a bit here in Norman. Just a little bit of freezing rain could fall, but most of it's staying to our south and east right now. So what does this mean for precipitation types? If precipitation does fall in your area, if you're seeing some of the pink where you are, you may see a mixed chance for precipitation, either freezing rain or rain snow mix. If you're in the green, you'll see some rain. And we do have an isolated chance for snow in the northeastern corner of the state late tonight. So watches and warnings are out right now. There is a Road temperature in Norman, it's 50 degrees right now in Norman, 50 in OKC. So if any freezing rain does fall in your area in central Oklahoma, it may not stick. Although, even with this being, you still want to be cautious when driving in the roads tonight from your evening commute. So current wind chill, if you've been outside today, you know that it's cold from that wind. It's 19 degrees with the wind chill in Norman right now. 22 degrees in OKC, 22 up in Needed, and 18 out in Woodward. So those are cold temperatures with that wind chill. Lows for tonight, 22 degrees here in Norman, 21 in OKC. So we're well above normal for this time of year. 30 degrees is our normal, and we have rather light winds coming in from the north, 5 to 10 miles per hour tonight. Walking out the door tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., 20 degrees, making our way up to 42 by the 4 o'clock hour. We'll start out cloudy, but those clouds will clear out as we head throughout the day. And we do have a wind shift. Winds coming from the north until 4 o'clock when they start to come from the south, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Your highs for tomorrow, we're much warmer across the state. Guymon getting up to 50 over there, 42 in Woodward, 41 in Enid, 41 in OKC, and 42 here in Norman. So across the state, we're pretty much below normal for this time of year as well. And we have winds a bit blustery tomorrow as well, 10 to 15 miles per hour. So these next two days, again, blustery tomorrow, but the sun will return high of 42 on Wednesday. And Thursday, we'll see a high of 55, so we're getting warmer on Thursday. And winds coming from the south, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Rounding out the week, you'll see rain chances for Saturday and Sunday as a cold front could come through. Main rain chances we're going to see Sunday night, Sunday morning actually into Saturday night as that cold front does come through. But to end this week, we are going to be warmer than usual. Well, good deal. Ready for that sunshine to be back. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Jenna. Thanks, Jenna. Well, the Oklahoma basketball team suffered another big loss last night. Isn't that right, Sam? Yeah, Lauren, that's right. The Sooners lost a heartbreaker against West Virginia last night. We'll give you a recap of that game and what it means for the Sooners. And I'll give you a preview of a crucial game for Russ and the Thunder. Stick around, everyone. Sports is next.
Welcome back. Last night, the Sooners put their undefeated home record on the line against Javon Carter and number 19, West Virginia. The Mountaineers got hot early behind Lamont West's five threes off the bench. They led by as many as 11, and although OU almost pulled off the comeback, they just couldn't get it done. Trey Young led both teams with 32 points, but on this last possession, he almost loses the ball, manages to find Richard Odoms after regaining the ball. He can't get a good shot up, and OU just can't get another one up in time. Final score, 75-73. Mountaineers. And Josh Calloway joins us at the LNC with more on OU's first home loss of the season. Josh? Coming into this season, not many knew what to expect from the Sooner basketball team, but after a sizzling hot start that saw them pick up huge wins over Oregon, USC, Wichita State, TCU, and Texas Tech, expectations quickly became very high. Trey was pronounced the savior of the program, and this team looked to be a legit Final Four threat. But after yet another loss last night, the second this season to West Virginia, the storybook season has come to a screeching halt. The Big 12 gauntlet is proving to be just as tough as many expected it might be, and the Sooners are now a team trending heavily in the wrong direction. And the fight wasn't uh, what it needs to be, and and uh, they shot the ball for a great percentage and a lot of threes, and and uh, we didn't handle that very well. It's that time of year you gotta you just gotta play through it. Um, um, I'm not. I wasn't feeling. Uh, Feeling very good, um, but I mean, I'm not going to make any excuses. I mean, that's this is the nature of basketball. I've got to go out there and compete and give them all. The Sooners will have some time to prepare for their next test as they head to Ames this Saturday for another tough road game against Iowa State. Since some early impressive road wins, they have gone ice cold on the road as of late, having not won a road game this calendar year. To put that in perspective, the last time they won on the road, the football team was still preparing for the Rose Bowl. Josh Calloway, OU Nightly. Thanks, Josh. The women's basketball team was also in a close one as they almost upset the Baylor Bears in Waco. After being down by eight at halftime, the Sooners rallied late and managed to tie the game at 60 with just over five minutes left. But in the end, the third-ranked Bears were just too much to handle. They picked up their 19th straight win by a score of 74 to 65. The OKC Thunder have a tough test tonight on the road against the Golden State Warriors. The Thunder desperately, desperately need a win tonight. They've lost four straight and are suddenly on the playoff bubble. OKC has struggled on defense in the five games since losing Andre Roberson for the season, and it just so happens that Golden State leads the league in points per game. And of course, the matchup between Russell Westbrook and former teammate Kevin Durant is always one to look out for. And journalists aren't supposed to be biased, but I think it's safe to say this Tulsa anchor might be from Philly. Check out his reaction on live TV after finding, about the, finding out about the Eagles Super Bowl win. Guys, I got to say, this fan base is about as devoted as he gets. I saw a fan also get a tattoo of Nick Foles, a Super Bowl MVP, on his arm. So, safe to say they're excited about this one, their first Super Bowl ever. I mean, that's a pretty big deal, and I thought that, that Acres reaction was hilarious. I, I love that. Sports. Right here in Oklahoma, too. Sports people. <laughs> Great. Cool. Sports people. Still to come on OU Nightly, beer in the city of brotherly love. I'm Cheyenne Plummer at the Update Desk. The latest false alarm scare came Tuesday morning when a private forecasting company sent out a tsunami warning. The company turned a test message from the National Weather Service into a real warning due to computer code issue. Residents from the East Coast, Gulf of Mexico, and Caribbean were recipients of the warning. That's it for now. Lauren? Thanks, Cheyenne. Well, Philly fans are saying dilly dilly. Bud Light is offering each Eagles fan a free beer during the city's Super Bowl victory parade on Thursday. It all started last summer when Eagles lineman Lane Johnson promised free beer to the city of brotherly love during an interview with ESPN. And Bud Light said they'd cover the bill. Bud Light has also declared February 8th Philly Philly Day. All right, Lane Johnson, former Sooner, coming in clutch for uh, Philadelphia there. That's right, Storm. He did. He played here at OU. And Jenna is here with the weather fact of the day. What do you got for us, Jenna? Right, so we're going to take a look at the winter weather advisory right now. It's not affecting Norman, but areas in the purple want to stay cautious when you're driving on the road. It's winter weather advisory that is in effect until midnight tonight. 
So this is just a definition of a winter weather advisory. It's periods of freezing rain, mostly affected travel, mostly affecting travel conditions. All right, thanks, Shanna. Thanks. And uh, I know keep a, keep an eye on that for us. Yes. Thanks. And thanks for watching OU Nightly, brought to you by the Gaylord College at the University of Oklahoma. We'll see you back here tomorrow night, live at 4.30. Have a great evening. Good night.